There, there are two points I'd like to make about inspiration, two separate points. Mm-hmm. One is Nikola Tesla, the man who gave us alternating current and lit the world and gave us radio. Radio was invented by Nikola Tesla. Marconi had zero, nothing to do with it. He stole. He was hired by, by Nikola Tesla. To, he, he went to Nikola Tesla and asked for a job, and Nikola Tesla, being a generous man, gave uh, this young man a job uh, to help him, and, and his name was uh, Marconi, and Marconi stole from Nikola, Nikola Tesla, and I know what that's like. Nikola Tesla had written out how to create something called radio, how to do it electrically. And uh, but Marconi took those papers behind Tesla's back and went uh, went to the uh, trademark department and trademarked the idea, and copyrighted it or whatever you want to call it, and uh, and and then put it out there into the public. And then the big companies came to Marconi and said, "Wow, we want to do this." So they invented radio, and so we're told that Marconi invented radio. No, he stole it from his master. He stole it from the man who gave him a job. And I know what that's all about. I've I've had that happen. And so the idea of inspiration, when Nikola Tesla was in his late 80s, very old man, he was given a big awards dinner in New York. And the, where the world was thanking him for all the incredible things that he had given to the world. And, uh, and he said in the, uh, at the dinner, he gave a speech. Nikola Tesla spoke to the audience and he said, I have to tell you how I got my ideas to do what I've done. He said, every evening before bed, I will put a, a, a notepad on the little table next to my bed with a pen or a pencil. And he said that every morning when I wake up, there's a written invention on the pad. Somebody comes into my room at night and writes down an invention. And and the next morning I get up and it's all written out for me. And so I just go to my laboratory and follow the instructions and I invented radio. Or I invented uh, alternating current, or I made this invention or that invention. And today, Nikola Tesla has lit the world and given us radio and and all kinds of wonderful things this man gave to the world. But he said he was inspired by someone writing it down when he was sleeping, and so that's inspiration. To inspire comes from the word spire, to like perspire. Inspire, and so spire is to breathe together. Breathing is spire. And so someone was breathing into him their ideas and coming from somewhere else. Well, that was one point I wanted to make about inspiration, is it doesn't necessarily come from you. It comes from out there. And second, it was uh, was a, I think it was called a TED Talk, on on uh, on the web, the company is T E D TED, and they and they invite different scientific people and different interesting people uh, to give lectures, and they are usually only about twenty minutes long. And this lady doctor was very interesting. She talked about how the brain works, and why do humans have a brain? Why do all living things have a brain? And she said, your brain as a human has nothing to do with your creativity, with your ideas and your, and your understanding of things. The brain is designed to do only one thing and one thing only. It is to control the mechanisms of your body. It controls the electrical impulses that go to your, your muscles so that you can walk, so you can run, so you can climb. It, it controls your body's muscles. It controls the movement of the human body. It controls the blinking of the eye, the swallowing of water. 
It controls everything in your body. It's nothing more than a controlling mechanism for your human body. But the, but when it comes to your imagination, your creativity, she said, the ideas and concepts that come out of you, we have as scientists no idea in the world where your spiritual perceptions come from, where your thoughts come from. We have no idea at all. All that we know is it has nothing to do with your brain. Your brain does not give you inspiration. It merely takes care of your body. And so, therefore, where do your thoughts come from? When the great composers were composing the be- beautiful music, where do those ideas for the for the music come from? When you get people who are writing profoundly important books, where and we say they were truly inspired, where well, we know it wasn't in their mind, it came from outside of their brain, so it implies that our inspiration is being, we are being overshadowed is the term that I use. Mm. Overshadowed by some kind of a higher intelligence in the universe. Something out there is feeding us information and it's called inspiration. We are being inspired. And some people are just naturally pick up on inspiration from out there, wherever it comes from, and they can create beautiful music, beautiful art. They can design rockets. They can design lasers, <laughs> televisions, all kinds of strange and wonderful imaginations in the human mind, but it does not come from your brain. It comes from out there. Well, and, and that, so that makes the, sense, the out- though. That, yeah. that makes so much sense because, you know, I want to go back to where you were talking about Spire. Because if you read the accounts of various creation stories, uh, at some mm-hmm. point, the breath of life is breathed into man, right? Precisely. Um, exactly. And here's the interesting part about that. A respiration, when, you know, you're, you're, you're having somebody put a, a mask on you to assist your breathing, that's respiration, right? Right. Uh, mm-hmm. to conspire is to breathe together, which means you're working together, you know, you're mm-hmm. toward a goal, all of that. But see, spire sounds a lot like spirit, and it does seem to me as though, you know, uh, that, that, that spirit and spire, that they must be related together. And this is me putting the dots together from what, what you say and also from some other sources. Um, the, the breath of life obviously comes from outside of you. So, That's right. you know, the breath of life and the fact that you are inspired, you are given breath in, if you will, uh, from somewhere else. And where does the Precisely. air come from? Well, the air was provided to you by the Creator, obviously, but the original breath you took, you must breathe in before you can breathe out, <laughs> or you must breathe out before you can breathe in. Either way, it, it doesn't matter. The whole thing doesn't work without something coming from outside. So, to be inspired, to conspire, all, all of these things, spirit inspire, they just they just sound pretty similar for some reason. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, 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 and here we go. Even, even the act of life, you know, that first breath. Yeah. Uh, it, it is the aspiration, right? Because an aspiration, this is where you don't have the breath yet, but you're looking for it, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Because you're, you're aspiring to do something. Aspire is, is, is a huge thing. Spire, spirit, the breath of life, if you will, and, and the breath of an idea coming in from elsewhere uh, uh another guest i had uh, sa- says that you know uh, all people are, are subject at all times to external input and yep. that's uh i guess true on all levels if you consider from the mechanical need for breath to the concept of spirit and the concept of life even uh you know what what, what happens when you expire <laughs> Uh, you know, that, that, that's literally what they call it when you die in a lot of cases. That's right. Uh, so X would be out of, well, your breath is now out of you, and once your breath is out of you, you're dead. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's an interesting thing there that, that, that aspire, it just seems to be a, a much larger, grander kind of, uh, 
idea than people give it credit for. They just sort of take it for granted. And if you think about it just commonly, anybody listening right now could shut their eyes. And you don't often give a lot of thoughts to the every breath you're taking. But without every breath you're taking, quite frankly, nothing else is going to happen, is it? That's right. So, and so many yeah. times we know, I, it's happened to me so many times. Uh, in my life, I have been confronted by a problem <clears throat> that other people cannot handle. They can't figure out what to do, even in, in building, even in building and, and secular work. Uh, you're confronted by something that happens, and and how do you fix it? Well, we don't know how to fix it. Well, some people are just inspired. They say, "Well, wait a minute. Why don't you just do this and connect this here, and then you know, and then plug this in over here, and there it is. It works." Well, how did you know how to do that? I don't know. I just figured it out. Just it just occurred to me. Well, how did it occur to you? I was inspired. Somebody or something out there told me when I was looking at it. It told me in my mind how this thing worked, and I was inspired to do it. And so when you listen to the composers of music, uh, you can tell they were inspired. They didn't just read it out of a book. They knew how the mathematical tones work. They know how music works. And that's a incredibly dark subject, how the tones of music work and, and how to put them together to cause people to be inspired to do good things, to do bad, to do incredible things with music. Music can be inspire, inspirational. I mean, they play they play drums and, and certain kinds of music for the military, and it makes a man feel like he, uh, he's a man. He, was, he can defend himself. He can defend the country because of this music. And it's just an inspiration for military inspiration. And, uh, and, and of course, in Hollywood, you have what is called programmed music. It's called programming music. In a movie, when something evil is going to happen, you get a certain kind of, of music. When something is going to be funny and silly and, and to be laughed at, you get that kind of music behind it. So it's programming you, your mind with music so that you are inspired to get the idea out of the movie. So inspiration is not part of what the brain does. Inspiration comes from outside the brain, which means whatever it is out there, the way I, when I talk to about, when I talk to audiences about God, I think it's important to define your term. Because so many times other people have other ideas about something you're talking about. If you talk about love, uh, many different people have many different ideas about what that word means. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk about God, I believe that our the human family, the human people on the earth, their brains are a computer. We're an incredible computer. It's alive. And that computer runs on wiring, and we're told that we, our blood vessels and our nerves are miles and miles of nerve endings in our body. That's the wiring for the computer to all the body, to control the body. The brain needs to be able to send messages out to certain nerves for you to do certain things. And so... The brain is a computer, and I believe that what we call God is some kind of a, for a lack of a better term, some sort of a Wi-Fi unit, mm -hmm. whereby you can have a hundred different computers in a room, and they're all on a one Wi-Fi unit, which means all 100 computers can be doing 100 different things, tuning into different different places and doing different things and they're all getting it from one source from a Wi-Fi unit. So in my mind, I think of some sort of an electromagnetic force in the universe that is brilliant, is highly intelligent, is extraordinarily well-informed 
and it is communicating with us like a Wi-Fi does to computers because all of us have brains and they're computers. Mm. And so something is, is, is guiding our destiny. Something out there is guiding our thinking. And if you've ever seen a flock of birds, large, large flocks of birds with thousands of birds, and you see them all flying in one direction and it instantly, in, a, in an absolute one-second instant, they all turn, all the birds turn and go a different way. And they all then flip back and turn and go a different way. How come all of the birds knew to turn at that very one second point and they all turned and went a different way together like the fish do? We call it schools of fish. And I've seen it where the fish are thousands of fish and they're all sailing along together and instantly. All of a sudden they all go in a different direction. How is that possible? Each one of them will, uh, you know, can go wherever they want. No, they can't. They go together, and wherever, when, and when they're supposed to turn, they will. Everybody will turn instantly. It's some kind of an inspiration, which I tend to think is something like some sort of a Wi-Fi unit. I'm just using that very loosely. Some mm-hmm. kind of a communication with a higher mind in the universe that men have called God. Right, you, you know, you, you've inspired wise. you've inspired a question here, uh, because I, I I love the concept of a Wi-Fi unit. Now I'm not sure if the Wi-Fi unit is just the way, the just the way I'm using it. I'm yeah. just using that term. Well, no, it's okay. But I'm I was just going to say I'm not sure if the Wi-Fi unit is God or if the Wi-Fi unit is just the best way that God can possibly even funnel things to these other little teeny tiny computers, which we are. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure because. Look, it's not like we could handle, or your your. Let, let's go with your cell phone, your laptop, whatever. Your, it's not going to handle the whole internet at once. No. Okay, so it's got to go through something. And and here we go about talking about different mechanisms because you brought up music. I don't know if you've ever done a presentation on music, but music links to everything. And you've known some great musicians, Steve Allen being one of them. He he was actually a very talented uh, multi instrumental musician. That's right. Uh, not not the thing he's prominently known for, but I assure you it's true. I, I don't have to assure Jordan. Jordan knew him, but I assure you, the listener, that Steve Allen was a uh, played multiple instruments of all sorts, um, and and well, by the way. That's but, right. But here's the thing: uh, music, in and of itself, it is simultaneously mathematical. It is uh, geometric in that uh, tone can be measured uh, in shape, so to speak. Uh, you have rhythm, which is clearly mathematical, and also... Um, and gee, when you understand yeah. the great composers during the Middle Ages, the great composers in the late and the Renaissance composers, if you understand what they were doing, they're not just picking sounds that sound nice no it was mathematical it was very deep understanding of the of the creation of the universe the breathing in and the breathing out of 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 uh the universe it was a very extraordinary story about how the great composers did what they did and composed the music it had to do with an occult heavy duty science of vibrations, rhythms, and how the and, and they could change the whole concept of a nation by music. I mean, the Germans used the music from Wagner, and, and it inspired. And America has music that inspires the nation because there is some kind of a mathematical science to it. There's a science to putting music together. And, and the great composers realize that. And today, the master musicians today, musicians today, know that, that you need to understand how the universe vibrates and how the, you know, and Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans, they understood the mathematics of the universe and how to write music. It's an incredible story of how to be inspired. You have to know what you're doing when you're a composer putting music together. 
because it's going to affect the brain waves of the people of the world when they hear it. And it's really an incredible story. And I've heard people explaining how the great masters wrote their music. It's very, very deep. It's not just listening to pretty sound. No, no. Well, right. They did it with the vibrational. They knew how it would be vibrating in your mind and what your brain would do with this particular vibra- vibra- vibratory frequency. One incredible story about how the brain communicates with the heavens and the heavens communicate with you. And we know that the planets and the sun and the moon affect your brain. Mm. And the planets all have a resonant frequency and each one of those planets when you were born get, you know, affected your mind. When you were born, you came out of your mother into the world and the sun has a profound electrical feel on the earth that is causing incredible stuff to happen. Our weather, the moon affects people. It affects the female. It affects her uh, her periods uh, once a month. is caused by the moon. The moon pulls the oceans of the world. We know that the moon affects the oceans. Why? Because they're water, and the moon affects water. This is why your body is like 76% water. So how does the moon affect you at the full moon? Well, it causes you to get silly and crazy, sometimes really crazy. So we call you a lunatic. (laughs) Why? Because the moon is affecting your blood. It's affecting your brain. The vibrations in your mind are being affected by the sun, the moon, Mars, Jupiter. And so women are from Venus and men are from Mars, meaning our minds operate differently because of the way we are born and and who we are and the vibrations in the brain. It's a very big subject about inspiration. And, and the inspiration comes from out there. Mm. 